Hey, 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 hey. We are leaving church, boys and girls. What's up, everybody? My name is Russ, rwgresearch.com. I don't know what I'm doing today. I don't know what I'm doing right now, but right now I'm trying to get back out on the highway. I don't really like the highway, to be honest. But, um, that's where we're headed. So, that's where we're going to go. I forgot to buckle my uh, forgot to buckle my helmets real quick, so I will do that before I get too far. Cause once I'm on the highway, yeah, I'm pretty well screwed. That's better. The question is, is which way should I go home? I could go a long way. I go a short way. Short way is the highway. It's not real fun. It's kind of boring. It's just the highway. The other way is the hot way. And if I go the hot way, uh, well, you know. Woohoo! She runs well. I like that. I like it a lot. Cool. So this is Stephanie Street. I normally don't take this street, but I can take this street all the way home if I want to. This video is going to be... I'm not sure what this video is going to be about. There's a lot of uh, custom license plates around here though. That's for sure. Matter of fact, I don't even know if the audio is going to work on this video. But I do know one thing. I'm all by myself. Is this a turn lane? Hmm, this is a turn lane. Ah, uh, well. I'm going to have to get over. Get all the way over. Thanks, buddy. Okay, so I'm gonna close this just so I can talk to you a little better. Shouldn't be as windy. But uh, yeah, life has been very interesting lately. There's been so many things going on, so many things to do. Been working nonstop to accomplish goals that must be met in order for tomorrow to be a successful day so I'm always worried about the day I'm in not really about the day after put all my faith that the day after will be taken care of I just do what I need to do in the day and the hour that I have and everything else will come in due time so uh, yeah I'm happy about that very happy about that. My nose itches. Ah, that's better. Much better. So, it's hot. I'm trying to uh, avoid the traffic, but, you know, I'm not going down the highway so I can speak to you guys and it'll be a little bit better than if I was going down the highway. But that means it's going to be freaking hot. Which is not the best choice I've made. But the good news is, is that I can pretty well talk to you and not have to worry about anyone else listening to me. Because everyone has their windows closed and their AC on. And I'm in a freaking jacket and gloves and a hot helmet. Enjoying the time with you. I have a lot of things I could talk about. I think one of the things I'm going to talk about right now, though, is actually about Newman's technology. So, 
for the longest time, I've been trying to do certain things. One of those things is actually uh, basically get the system to run at its self-resonant frequency or above, which is where you start getting into negative inductance, aka capacitance operational mode of a coil. All right. So that's that's the whole purpose of achieving the goal I'm trying to achieve. And Newman actually did this. Uh, it's kind of funny to me. I don't think Newman fully understood everything he did. And if he did, then he didn't fully dis disclose it in his book or anywhere else. But um, Dr. Roger Hastings spent a lot of time, you know, investigating the operation of his motors. And, you know, the bigger the diameter of the coil, the more inductance you have. And so the bigger the coil and the smaller the wire, or more turns you can put on that same physical space, the more inductance that you'll have. And he used number 5 AWG wire. That's some really big wire. And he wrapped it in a 3 foot diameter form. I mean, that's, that's huge. It might have been actually bigger than that. It might have been 4 foot. But either way, it's jive frickin' enormous. Like, I think it was three feet tall and four foot diameter. And you got, you know, over four and a half thousand pounds of copper. You start thinking about that, that's a ridiculous amount of inductance. So, what it allows you to do is, for instance, my really, really big coil, and I don't remember the calculation of his big, big five gauge coil, but, um, but for instance, my big Gynamis coil resonates around 120 hertz. So if you do the math, I need to be running, and it's a two-pole, so I need to be running at an operational frequency of above 120 hertz per um, revolution. I don't remember the math, but it was it was fairly high in RPM. But it was it was reachable. So by adding a few capacitors on the outside, you could bring the self-resonant frequency down just enough where you could actually spin the uh, magnet inside of that thing, right? You could spin it at the basically the frequency you need to be in the self-resonant frequency operation of that system. And that's sort of the important piece of what Newman, I think, discovered is basically making a negative inductor. I mean, that's basically what he was doing. Now, there's a bunch of confusion. When I talk about negative inductors and negative resistors, people get negative resistance confused with negative inductance. So, that's the like important thing that you have to remember, is that those two things are different. Negative resistance is a device well, a true negative resistance is the device which generates power of some kind that comes from somewhere. But a negative resistance in the light of a um, gun diode or some other similar thing is that the resistance of the nominal device is, let's say, 100 ohms. So you can't really get below that. But a negative resistance, according to like a gun diode, you can get a resistance that's lower than 100. So a plasma arc is a negative resistance, right? A, a transformer ballast is a type of negative impedance, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, that's similar to what I'm trying to talk about, where that's differentiating a negative inductor versus a negative resistance. So a negative resistance, a true one, is something that generates power. A negative inductance is something such as the device operating, I should say, such as an inductor operating in a range where the cosine is flipped. Opposite cosine. Opposite sine, I should say. So, a capacitor and an inductor are different in the fact that one operates in such a mode where the uh, like a capacitor, okay? We'll talk about a capacitor for a few minutes. The capacitor operates in a in a space where the current is leading the voltage, okay? And an inductance 
is operating in a mode where the opposite is true. Voltage is leading current. Like that's the important pieces of those two items. So, a negative inductor is nothing more than an inductor running in a capacitive operation or operational mode, which is the opposite sign. And then you can also have a negative capacitor also. And that would be where the opposite is true. A capacitor is operating as an inductor in the mode of operation where the sign is flipped. So that, that's the, you know, the, the defining definition difference between negative capacitance, negative inductance, and a negative resistance. Um, a light bulb, for instance, doesn't hold true for Ohm's law through the whole operational temperature of the device. Once a light bulb heats up, it changes its resistance value. And these are like a little important pieces that you just got to understand and you learn over time and you learn these uh, properties of these things and you start realizing the, the differences between them. So the whole, the whole Newman um, motor is, in my opinion, the important piece of that is actually operating a capacitor I'm sorry, operating an inductor in a capacitive operation so that the current is in the opposite place of where it normally is. And I'll let you figure out why that's important. This, if you just start sitting down and drawing it out and looking at it and looking at where things are placed and why, you'll start realizing that the video series I was doing on Newman and how all of the little details I was trying to express in there makes sense. Now, it's more fun for you to figure it out than for me to just tell you an answer, which I could tell you an answer, I guess, but I don't know why I would do that, because <laughs> you won't learn anything. You, you won't get what I'm trying to say. So just spend some time looking up negative inductors, capacitors, how they work together when they've got opposite signs, where the current is located according to everything else in the system. And I'm pretty sure that that is what Newman was doing. And that is why I started making flat Tesla pan, or I guess they'd be flat Tesla pancake coils, yeah. Bifiler wound pancake coils. You know, I was making those coils and I haven't got those done yet. I've been working on a another big project for someone else that I have to do to make a living <laughs> and uh, keep my family afloat right now so um, I'm focused on something a little different I haven't even got to that yet that's why I haven't been making videos because I've been working on priorities which is taking care of my family and also uh, trying to spend a little bit more time with them and uh, have uh, have the proper uh, priorities in my life for a little while. Taking a break from YouTube is a mental relief. Uh, it takes a lot of effort to get through YouTube videos. Don't forget I'm not just recording a video and publishing it. I'm doing the science, understanding it, describing it in my own words, making it make sense to me so I can describe it to you, editing the video, publishing the video, recording the video. It's just like there's so much more involved than people realize, so it takes a lot of time to get there. And that's why uh, some of these videos recently have just been the way they have. But anyway, back to Newman. So the whole purpose, right, of making these coils is because I wanted them to operate in a capacitive operation, which is the same thing as a negative inductance. That's, that's basically what it is. Now, people will tell you, hey, there's no such thing as negative inductance. You can't have negative inductance. Well, actually, that's an incorrect statement. You can have a negative inductance, and they call it um, above itself. They call it the, what a coil is above its self-resonant frequency would be considered negative inductance. So it's frequency-based, um, and there's some important things that happen when you take a coil above its self-resonant frequency um, because what you get in a coil and what you get in a capacitor are two different things 
and for a coil to act as a capacitor but still have coil properties is very different and unique but the hard part is is that it's extremely difficult to get to that point most self-resonant frequency of small coils are in the gigahertz <laughs> so you're not going to ever reach that on a on a just conventional system or a conventional coil i should say and so you know that's kind of the uh there's a three-wheeler back there can you see it so that's kind of the difference um you know between a, a regular coil and what Newman built with these giant humongous coils now he had some toy versions that he thought worked but in general he built these ginormous machines and he hooked capacitors to them and uh, if you do that in series like he was doing then you lower the self resonant frequency and and you still have capacitors there but you also still have the proper functionality of the uh, of the inductor from uh, some of my research. It still can do what we're trying to do. This guy just cut me off. Thanks a lot, buddy. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So basically, at the end of the day, um, I've been working super hard on another related project and uh, and been filming all sorts of stuff and uh, we'll get around to publishing information and data as time goes on. Um, but uh, Newman definitely was in the right direction of doing things. And what's really cool about that is that uh, most people don't realize that. But if you look at Dr. Roger Hastings' reports, he talks about self-resonant frequencies. He talks about the, the operation of the device. And uh, Newman describes it in his own words. One of the interesting things is, is he said, add capacitors to the coil until the commutator stops sparking. Well, what you're doing there is you're making a balanced system. So you're adding enough capacitance to make the system balanced at its operational speed. And uh, that's one interesting aspect. I don't think he really understood how to do all the math behind it maybe he did but he just didn't disclose it disclose it so anyway uh, recently I have uh, been putting all of my faith into um, my current situation in life which is making sure I have a roof over my family's head and some food on the table and a place to call home and I'm going to be doing that for as long as I have to in order to make sure I can survive. But what's interesting about that is uh, I know that tomorrow will be a great day. No matter what happens because I'm not control, not in control of the, out, of the outcome. I'm only, I'm only in control of the input. So I can only make the right choices and try to do the right thing. And whatever happens beyond that is completely out of my control and I leave that to uh, to God himself to guide me and to make sure that uh, the choices I make are the right choices and uh, that he will help me through any choices that you know may not be uh, may not be the proper choices yes that is a yellow light oh look at there we made it but barely Ha ha ha, I got away with that one because this jacket is friggin' hot, boys and girls, it's hot. So, um, yeah, it's actually probably less than 100 degrees. It's finally starting to cool off around here, which is friggin' awesome because it's been hot. It's been like 100 and... It's been above 110 degrees for a while. So that's uh, Fahrenheit for you people in another country. It's been over, and my car one day said 118 degrees. Um, we went, we went uh, uh, in town a little bit more and was in a parking lot and just sitting there in the parking lot on the blacktop. It's 118 degrees. And uh, it didn't change much as we drove around. It stayed pretty consistent. But, um, you know, one of my good friends who's been with me on this research and life adventure for a really long time and his brother um, Kevin and Darcy you know they they were and I uh, 
don't think they mind me talking about this, but they were asking me some, some pretty interesting questions, and I think I want to kind of share this uh, with you guys. So they were, they were asking me, like, Russ, why do you always, um, you know, like, basically praise Jesus and not God? And uh, in my belief system in Christianity, you basically, Jesus came and showed us the proper way to live and to be so that we could get to God. Because Christianity teaches that you want a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. And that's, that's very true. We want a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. And we have that. I have that. And like I said in one of my last videos, you know, it took me a long time to get to the point where I was all in in my faith belief. I've been all in on this research, this sharing of knowledge, this helping of humanity, this uh, being, you know, friends with the community and trying to do the right thing and make the right choices. And don't get me wrong, I failed here and there. I've made some bad choices. I have done I, well, I wouldn't say bad choices. I just I made choices that I wasn't wise enough to understand what the right choice may be and the choice I made may not have been the choice I'd make now and you know that type of thinking um, I don't regret ever doing anything per se, but there are some situations that I'd probably change if I would have redone them now that I have a little bit wiser relationship with uh, knowledge <laughs> so anyway what I'm saying is is that you know, for the first four or five months of my uh, uh, moving to Las Vegas area were really stressful. I actually had a migraine for every single day, really bad migraine, almost every single day for three to four months. And it was just the stress of moving, having a new thing that I got to try to do and deal with and the unknowns of what tomorrow brings and what it taught me is how to be super faithful in the fact that I am not in control God is in control I can only make the right choices to allow him to work through me and that's that's the ultimate answer to understanding why God is so important is because the divine power and knowledge you have access to through God and um, the reason I brought up uh, the good brothers of mine is that they were asking about, you know, why, why do you always, like I said, praise Jesus and not God himself? Why not just go straight to God? And uh, actually, it's, it, that is very true. We actually do go straight to God. Uh, he, he is the, uh, the Almighty who sent Jesus to show us for humans how to act, how to be, what to do, how to treat people, how to deal with situations. And uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament, if you read through them, you'll realize that the Old Testament was all about law. And people were very afraid of God and all these just bizarre situations. And if your son was disobedient, they would bring them out and stone him to death. Or, you know, if something happened uh, like adultery, you know, even if, like, the woman wasn't at fault, uh, the woman would be stoned to death. But if she was outside of the um, city limits where she couldn't, you know, nobody could hear people scream or her screaming, then she would be safe and wouldn't be stoned to death. I mean, it's just bizarre. It's a pretty crazy step. And Jesus came and showed us how to live, and that's the importance of his piece of the aspect. And, and uh, you know, people are always saying, well, there's been many other similar prophets so to speak that came to, to to earth and the same situation happened and blah 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 but I don't know for me personally uh, and I brought this up before and you guys argued about it but the fact that we actually changed uh, the time before death and after death around this event of Jesus death is like kind of just something I scratch my head over and go there had to be some ginormous happenings happening if that's the case and if it all revolves around this and the story is written and um, it's said that it takes like more than 400 years or 500 years or something like this to create a myth a mythical story or a, a made-up individual who isn't real or whatever the case may be and 
all of the uh, recordings that we can find are dated within I think within a hundred a hundred and fifty years or something like that so there's not enough time in the storyline when the books were written to actually create that and so it's kind of like what it's kind of interesting so that tells me that there's some very big happenings happening so yeah anyway so moral of the story I have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God himself and uh, Jesus being his son they are a trinity you know these, these are one and the same God in the flesh so to speak so anyway this video is a bit random I realize that and uh, I just wanted to make a video and tell you guys I love you very much and uh, for those of you out there who are following the research in due time we will continue going with the flow right now you know what I'm saying what else are we gonna do so uh, yeah I love you guys have a most wonderful Sunday or whatever day I end up posting this today Sunday I just heading back to church like I said at the beginning of the video and uh, we'll speak to you guys uh, sometime shortly. I'm trying to make a few videos of things here and there, but man, I, I haven't had time to sit down and edit anything. That's been the hardest part right now. Filming is not bad, but editing is a hard thing to get to. So anyway, peace and love. We'll talk to you guys another day. I love you very much. Bye-bye.